Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is lamp working in black and white. I wanted to kind of highlight how you can make the dots into stripes bead a little bit more substantial. I wanted to get longer with these stripes. It's simple, but it gives you a good idea of how to really stretch those dots out. All right, I hope you guys give this a try and I uh, hope you like it. We'll see you next time in the dungeon. Okay, I'm going to start this bead out with a nice black base. And I'm just going to wrap that a couple times up my mandrel. So I have about uh, maybe a half an inch of glass on there. Just wrap it a couple more times on the end and then go ahead and roll it out. This ends up being slightly smaller than a, an inch on the mandrel. I want to make sure my sides look really nice. Roll it out one more time, get everything ready to go. And on top of that, I'm going to start to add a clear wrap right in the center of the black. I'll do three wraps on this, maybe four. I gathered as much glass as I could and got a nice, just a really big wide disc. And once you have that disc, go ahead and flatten it out a little bit, get it more on center. Now around that, I'm gonna add about 20 small dots doing my best to make sure they're not touching each other. And each of these dots will become a nice line on the bead. So I figured that this is one of the better ways to be able to achieve this, although I did try quite a few different techniques trying to get this same pattern. This seemed to be the easiest way. So on top of those, I am going to add two wraps of clear and I am just twisting and turning my clear rod as I go in the flame so it's as even as possible on on the top and on the sides. It was really hard for me to trap each um, dot of white but you really don't want to trap the whole dot. You want a little bit on both edges and that will allow that glass to really pull out. So what I'm doing here is just doing my best to heat just the front and a little bit on both sides so that clear glass starts to get wider and wider. I don't really want the black base to start melting too much. So what I'm gonna do is roll this out a little bit and then that will, you'll start to see those lines stretch out. And then from here, I do quite a bit of heating. You know how the glass wants to go where it's the hottest? Well, that's what I'm doing here. I'm letting that heat go on one side of the bead until all of that glass pulls down to the bottom, and then I'll do it on the other side. So I'm stretching that clear glass out to the edges as far as I can go. I wasn't able to go the whole way as you'll be able to see, but um, once it's stretched out here, very gently stretch this out and get your sides looking really nice again. You can already see those lines appearing really nice and long. On this side, I'm just going to slightly roll that out to match the other side. And we have our lines. They're not perfect, but they'll look better once we have this, uh, this black on the edge. This kind of helped me to cover up those jagged lines on the bottom. I have seen other people do this technique and it is unbelievably cool. I'll have to keep working on it and uh, I'll show you how, how my progress goes <laughs> later on down the line. So I'm gonna add some black to the other side, the other edge, and roll that out. 
and I'm gonna start to make a, yeah, this is gonna end up being like a bicone. And once I have those sides nice and um, flattened or rounded out where I want them to be, I wanted to play a little bit with those lines. So I have a clear stringer and I'm just going to do that plunge and twist. Get the spot where I want it to twist nice and hot, just spot heating, and then push in your stringer and twist. I will do four of these and each twist I'm twisting the opposite direction. One more time, and I just love to see those lines twist up. It really makes this bead look so interesting. And on top of those little swirls, I'm just gonna add a nice big dot of clear. I'm not going to melt these down all the way. I'm just gonna let them kind of melt down with um, the rest of the bead as I work on it. So for the very end here, I have a cane that I used for the, um, oh, the filigrana demonstration I did. You can see how I made this cane on that demonstration. But all I'm doing is just adding the cane to one side, straightening it out, and then I'm going to add the cane to the other side. And when the cane meets itself, I really, you know, I don't worry too much about it being perfectly matching each side. It's a handmade bead. If I wanted to, you know, really try a little harder to make that pattern match, um, you would probably have to cut it and very gently push it into place. All right, so I'm going to heat those up and all I'm doing here at the very end is just rolling those out into bi the bicone shape. And I'm not gonna add any clear on top of these edges. This bead is pretty much done. When uh, the side cane is, is rolled out, it has this most amazing three-dimensional little pattern to it. It's really beautiful. And that's it. Simple, simple, simple. I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, there we have it. See you guys next time.